ISO 9001 objectives and targets, ISO 45001 objectives and targets, ISO 14001 objectives and targets, section 6.2 of all of those standards is what we are here about and what we're talking about today in this best practice webinar. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kobe Simmons. I'm the CEO here at Best Practice. And um, we'll get into the, the uh, formalities very, very shortly. But in this particular webinar, we're going to be talking about how do we get to where we want to go? What's this whole objectives and targets thing all about? What's the business planning process that's implied by the standards all about? It's obviously got an ISO standards frame around it, and that's what we're talking about today in this webinar. But we'll explore clause 6.2 so you've got something to refer back to. Uh, but it's really about planning and setting objectives, setting goals. Uh, uh, if you're sitting watching this webinar, you could put a personal overlay that, across this, but more importantly, how would we document that stuff so that it's effective in an organization and helps the organization to grow. So thanks for joining us once again. My name's Kobe Simmet. For those of you that uh, haven't experienced uh, me before, um, thanks for joining us. And um, I know I've got a few friends out there and um, some family members and cousins and those sorts of things. So uh, thanks everybody for, uh, for dropping in today. So hopefully what I've got for you is something that's going to help you go forward. Grab yourself a notebook. Um, make sure you've got the opportunity to write some notes. If you haven't got that handy, don't stress. Uh, we're recording this. So YouTube's doing us a favor. It records this particular webinar and we'll be able to email you the link to the recording. It will be available on our YouTube channel after the, uh, you know, the, the little engine in the back of YouTube has, uh, has formatted the video. So give it probably an hour after completion and then the recording is available. You can press pause at any time in this webinar and I'll keep going, uh, but um, your streaming will get paused and then uh, you can come back to it. So if something comes up, if the phone rings, you won't miss anything. Uh, what I would ask a favor though, is if you have got burning questions, I'm here for you. This is live. There's, a, there's probably a, a two or three second delay. In fact, I'm watching a, a, a prompter below me and there's about a four second delay. So I'm here for you live. I'm here to ask you, I'm here to answer your questions. Um, if you haven't got questions now, but you might have them later on, a good place to get me is on LinkedIn Messenger. So finding me on LinkedIn is a good place to, to interact with me if you're not already connected, but sending me a LinkedIn message. Uh, late in the evenings, while um, the family's all going to bed and, and uh, the midget, um, I've, I've only got the one son, but while he's going to bed, I sit on the couch and, um, and respond to LinkedIn messages. So that's just how I plan my day. So if you want to get messages, a um, couple of colleagues last night, I was going backwards and forwards, giving them some guidance and advice and some mentoring. Um, that's, uh, that's how I was helping them. Okay, let's get into it. Who are we and what do we do? Uh, there's a couple of things I'd like you to just be aware of. Um, really importantly is we've got um, a bunch of people in the room, if you just heard that. Um, I've got Rigdon, Beck and Jack helping me today. Uh, they're here um, and they're monitoring the dashboard. They're looking at your questions, your comments. Uh, we are streaming live on Facebook. So if you just check out, um, uh, if you can take me back to that connect with us screen, sorry Jack, if you can just give everybody that. So, um, so with, uh, with what I've got behind me there, um, just above my head, uh, we've got LinkedIn, lots of stuff happening on the company LinkedIn page. We've got lots of stuff happening on the um, Instagram page, motivational tips and tricks. We've got stuff happening on, obviously, on YouTube. So uh, YouTube's the place that we do a lot of our main content, and that's where lots of our value is. Uh, so just be aware that those things are there. Little tweets occasionally. Um, certainly my LinkedIn connects to my Twitter, so you, you can follow me on Twitter or follow me on LinkedIn. Um, but watch out for what's happening on the, on the YouTube channel. Lots of free stuff. And the YouTube channel is really important for you and the value that I hope that you can you know, extract from it is your ability to be able to share our videos and share the things that I say with other people in your network to help them. So if you're, if you're listening to this webinar today and, and you like what I'm saying and you like what you're hearing and you're thinking about someone else, someone at work or someone in another company or somewhere else, the whole idea with this exercise is that you can actually copy that link and just flick it to them via email or text or Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn Messenger so that they can watch it. And, and think about the timestamp. So there's a particular, you know, on the timer on the bottom of the video, you just say, hey, at three minutes, Kobe said this great thing, watch that, what do you think? Um, and, and that's part of this process. So tag, share, um, you know, it, it's not just tagging and sharing, it's, it's about helping people. I'm really passionate about helping people. So 
Just quickly before I move on, uh, on the other side of the screen there is a screenshot of our training academy. So there's a couple of things and I'm gonna get into a bit, of, bit more detail about that, but connecting with us on our training academy, it's a website, www.bestpracticeeducation.com.au and there's a bunch of stuff that's more in depth than what you'd see on YouTube. So there's free checklists to download, our magazines available, there's training courses that you can purchase. So if you wanna do a deep dive into this content, bunch of great training courses that we've spent lots of time recording. So little snippets of our, of our value and, and you know, information that we've got here in these webinars, but the big stuff is available uh, over there in that training store that you can purchase, lots of stuff for free and some stuff to purchase as well to help you with the training. It's all self-paced, it's all video, it's all on your screen where you are, so uh, which, which is quite exciting. Um, thanks, Jack. Let's jump across onto the next slide. Um, do we have, um, sorry, do we have our certificates one? Where'd the certificates go? I'm in front of the certificates. <laughs> um, if you could move me, please. Look at that, there you go, look how, how clever that is. Okay, so, um, so right, uh, right at the bottom of, there we are, over there, over there is a picture of our certificate. So a large part of what we do here at Best Practice is we have a big team of assessors, and we call them Best Practice Assessors, and they will come to your organisation and they will help you through ISO 9001, 14001, 45001, so your quality assurance, OHS, environmental, data security, management systems. So they're assessors and they'll assess you against those ISO standards. And if you've, if you've you know, defined, implemented, and are improving a management system that complies with one of those standards, we can certify you. So you know, you know, our original name here at the, in the organization was Best Practice Certification. We now refer to ourselves more as Best Practice. You'd see that here on my, um, on my T-shirt um, as Best Practice Certification, but that's just a, a picture there on the screen uh, of the, what a certificate looks like. So when someone becomes ISO certified, uh, to quality safety environment. You can see the red logo down the bottom of the certificate, the green one, the yellow one, the black one. Those are the uh, certification marks that uh, you can display once you've achieved that level of, uh, of compl compliance or conformance, if you like. So our guys will come out, they'll go through the standard with you, they'll look at how your system complies, and if everything's in place, uh, they'll, they'll certify you. They'll then work on a surveillance or regular basis, maybe six monthly basis, come and see you every six months, to, to keep inspiring you to keep improving. And it's a prompt. So they'll keep coming and they'll work, with, work through the standard with you and make recommendations in their report around areas that you could be looking into further to improve your organization. So hopefully what we can do here with these webinars monthly is complement that process and you can see us monthly in the webinars and have someone come out on site on a, uh, on a six monthly uh, that's my preference is that you do those assessments six monthly, six monthly or annual basis. So um, I can go in another webinar into why I think audits should be done six monthly and not annually because uh, lots of people ask us for annual audits but I think it's kind of, if you're going to do your, your certification assessments on an annual basis it's pointless. You might as well not do it at all. Um, over a year it's the same amount of time so if we're going to do assessments with you say for example we calculate the duration is 10 days it's my personal observation that organizations that are successful do two small audits of five days, for example, instead of one annual audit of 10 days. And annual audits are pointless. And that's my position, uh, and I'll defend it till my death. So um, I'll get off my soapbox, let's get into this. Everyone wants to know where they're going in 2018. So let's, uh, thanks Jack, we'll jump across um, and, uh, and get into it. Uh, okay, a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, welcome everybody um, who, who've just come online. I can see a bunch of you there now are starting to watch. Welcome everybody. A little bit of housekeeping before I get into the content that I've got for you today. If you're watching in our training academy, there's a little button down the bottom of the screen that says view on YouTube. If you click that button, your browser will take you to YouTube. And when that opens, there's a comments facility. So you can actually type comments and you'll see I've placed a couple of comments in there already, questions. Uh, I'd love everybody to jump in and say hello. So hit the YouTube button if you're not already watching on YouTube from our Training Academy or if you're on YouTube, um, jump into that comment section, say hello, I've got the dashboard in front of me and let me know who's here and who's watching and I'll give you a shout out. So I'd love to hear from you, just so a bit of a quick roll call, just type hi 
and let me know that uh, that that's working for you, and then I can uh, I can watch uh, watch what's going on. So that's that's right here in front of me. Okay, I'm gonna while you're saying hi and um, and let me know where you are. Maybe tell me where you're watching from. So whereabouts in the world you're watching from? Um, I'd love to hear from you. If you're struggling with YouTube and you've got a mobile device handy and you're a Facebook user, uh, I've got a camera on my side here which is streaming live to the Best Practice Facebook page. So if you follow us on Facebook, uh, you can jump across and you can see the webinar streaming. Slightly different angle, um, and that's over there too. And Rigdon's watching uh, what's happening on that, uh, on that camera and on that particular phone. Okay, um, so let's get into it. So I'm gonna just talk you through something. I've got a copy of uh, ISO 45001 right here, which is the oh and standard. And I guess we, we were brainstorming ideas around uh, what webinars to do, and the webinars are all promoted in advance in actually, uh, where's my thumb? This magazine, so certified magazines just behind me right here. You can download it from our training academy, and in the back of every issue of certified is a list of webinars. So last year we ran a whole bunch of webinars around sort of specific topics that were popular on our YouTube channel. And for the next set of webinars, I thought, hang on a minute, I actually want to, I'll want to push you guys a little bit harder. And I want to show you how these ISO standards are intended to actually push your organization to grow. Not, not be a grudge thing that you do. And we've been talking a lot in the business uh, over the last couple of weeks and I've had a couple of board we have monthly board meetings and my board of directors have been pushing me to push you into understanding that implementing an ISO management system is not a grudge buy it's not a grudge purchase it's not a grudge thing to do it's actually something that adds a lot of value to business um, there are obviously if for those of you that have read ISO standards and are familiar with ISO standards there is a section that call, that's called management review so here at Best Practice, our management review process includes two key, groups, two key groups of people. There's a board of directors, and the board of directors here at Best Practice meet monthly. On top of that, there is an executive team. So we've got our board of directors, and I'm the CEO, I report to the board. Uh, the board represents the interests of the shareholders. Under the board is the CEO, that's me, I hold that partic particular position here, and I work with the executive team to execute on our business plan and our strategy here in best practice. What we do as an executive team is we meet quarterly to have our management review, and I highly recommend, and I can't, I can't, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a really important point that I can't, you know, recommend it strongly enough is that those management reviews are conducted on a quarterly basis. So they follow the quarterly cycles of the financial year. So our management review here at Best Practice, our most recent one, was on Tuesday. So our whole executive team were off-site on Tuesday undertaking our management review. So we were updating our strategy, we were looking at our performance, we were, we were checking how we, get, we went against our targets, and we were lining ourselves up for the next financial year. So here in the Australian jurisdiction, the financial years run from the 1st of July uh, through to the 30th of June the next year. Uh, so it's sort of a, it's, it starts at halfway through the year, unlike the US, which is the calendar year. Uh, so we're framing up our budget. So the draft uh, version one of the 2018-2019 budget was presented. And to frame up that budget, we took all of the inputs and outputs of ISO management review, and we discussed those as agenda items and that helped us frame up things like resource needs, areas of performance we needed to improve. Uh, so we recognized and acknowledged some success that we've had over the last 12 months, and we roll quarterly. So the next one of those management reviews will be in approximately 12 weeks time, and where we will basically be winding up the financial year. Uh, we'll be we're looking at all of our reports and how we went, and we will be kicking off the strategy for the 2018-2019 financial year. The next management review of the executive team here at Best Practice will be a two-day offsite. So we do two-day offsite once a year, and then each quarter we do a one-day offsite to update, catch up, reset, um, and revi revise. Not reset, but revise. The reset happens once a year. So leading into that, I wanted to talk to you about, okay, well, I was thinking, well, what's my plan for 2018? What are the things that I want to improve on? And it prompted me to think, well, Actually, I could help you guys because I could say, well, I'm doing it. I'm gonna take you on the same journey 
that you know I'm going to take you on my journey if you like and so I've been looking at objectives and targets and I've been looking at what I need to do what I need to improve on and then how and and building out revising my management system to help me improve this organization and I thought well hey why not help you guys so I just wanted to sort of show you how I go about doing this I start with section section 6.2 so um, don't grab a copy. If you've got a copy of the standard handy, of any standard actually, I happen to have 45001 with me, which is the OHS standard. And I think it's good for me to be talking about commercials and budgets and profitability, but have an OHS standard in my hand to refer to, because I'm using this OHS standard to improve the profitability of the business. And it's a bit of the secret source that comes with running organizations and improving organizations. So I'm just going to go through the standard. Uh, what I'll just quickly point out is that all of the international standards, all the ISO standards, have now been aligned. And so six point, section 6.2 of ISO 9001, quality assurance, ISO 14001, environmental, ISO 45001, which is really exciting, international standard now for OHS, and also ISO 27001 for data and cyber security, information security, they've all got the same numbering system. So when you talk about 6.2, objectives and planning to achieve them uh, we can actually look at 6.2 in any standard and we can generically swap out titles to give us some guidance on what we need to do so i'm going to leave out ohs as i read this part of the standard and you'll see it's generic the organization shall establish objectives at relevant functions and levels in order to maintain and continually improve the management system and the performance of the organization so it could say OHS management system and OHS performance of the organization. It could say quality management system and quality performance of the organization. It could say environmental performance, uh, sorry, environmental management system and environmental performance. It could say financial management system and financial performance of the organization. It could say cyber security management system and cyber security performance the organization can you see where i'm going so all the standards are aligned so we can pick at one standard now and we can say okay i've got these different areas of risk and i'm not talking about that in this particular webinar we're talking about objectives and targets but i've got these areas of risk and i'm going to use this to manage that so just to go over that again the organization shall establish objectives at relevant functions and levels in order to to maintain and continually improve the management system and its performance. So as we get to the, you know, in, a, in probably in 10 to 15 minutes time, I'm gonna to start to look at the different relevant levels and functions in the organization to give you some guidance on how to frame up those objectives and targets for different people. So I'll come to that. Jack and I've, uh, Jack and I've put a couple of slides together that we'll, we'll go over. So the, to, to just go back to the standard, the objectives shall be consistent with the policy. They need to be measurable and or capable of performance evaluation. So it's pointless having an objective that you can't say at a point in time or on a specific date, did or didn't we achieve that? Because that's the accountability piece that's implied in this particular standard or in any of these standards. The, object, the objectives shall take into account applicable requirements and it's inferred there. That's your legal requirements, your contractual requirements, your industry requirements, your standard requirements, your local requirements, government requirements, regulators requirements, your stakeholders interests. Uh, take into account the results of the assessment of risks and opportunities. And all these standards now talk about doing a SWOT analysis or a risk and opportunities analysis. Uh, we're guiding you guys to do SWOTs because it's really simple, people get it. You don't need to train them new skills. You just say, hey, remember doing SWOT analysis? Yep, great, let's do one of those. Um, and then the objectives shall um, take into account the results of consultation with workers um, and where they exist, workers' representatives, be monitored, be communicated, and be updated as appropriate. And that's what we've got there. We've got policy, measurable, SWAT, consultation, communicated, and updated. Now, just on the topic of objectives, we're going to get into the concept of SMART, if you like, uh, specific specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. And I'm not gonna dig down into that because it's been around for a while, but if you wanna Google smart objectives, realistic is a really key part. And I've been guilty of setting unrealistic expectations for the growth of this organization uh, because I'm an entrepreneur and, I've, and I'm very motivated, I'm very excited, I'm very confident. And so when now that I'm 
getting older and becoming a little bit more mature, I'm starting to understand actually what's realistic. And so, it, so engaging people and saying what's realistic, obviously the role of the leader in the organization is to motivate, and push and excite people so that they can lift and keep lifting and keep lifting and improving their performance. Um, but being realistic is really important. So these standards talk about consultation. So they trigger it. They say, hey, don't just set them and give them to people and say, you know, you failed. Like, you know, don't just take a, 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 a high performance uh, football or soccer team and say, go win the World Cup. For some teams, that's just completely unrealistic. But if you could say, go and get number 10 in the World Cup, they might say, actually, that's achievable for us. We're currently number 14 and ranked number 14 in the world. We can get to number 10. We can, you know, that's a realistic objective and target and and you know ultimately then you can sort of consider whether that will you know whether you can survive on that if that makes sense um so that's just sort of the i guess the introduction uh, what's our next slide jack um and i guess what i wanted to do is i want to say okay well how do i link that now so how do we take 6.2 of the standard or 6.2.1 of the standard and how do we actually make that realistic for your organization now we're going to get to this in a couple of slides time but what I've been saying to people, and I wanted to you know, get it on record today in this webinar, is I've been saying in face-to-face -face meetings for about 10 years now, what's your intended promise to your customer? What's your intended promise to your staff? What's your intended promise to the environment, to society? You, you know, and, and things, you know, those types of motherhood statements get made on websites. And we've got a couple of websites loaded and ready to go in a couple of slides time, and we'll show you those promises. But I think, I think the question starts with you and, and thinking about your role, your seat, your position in the organization. And what are the, what are the promises that are implied, not, not implied, because I'll get to implied, but what are the intended promises that your organization makes to you from an OHS perspective? That they're gonna provide a safe workplace, uh, that you're gonna not get hurt or injured. If you get hurt or injured, you're gonna get looked after. Um, there's those sorts of things from a quality perspective. You know, what are the intended promises that you're making to your customer? We're going to get, we're going to deliver this thing, this product or service to you on this time for this price. And it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be damaged or scratched. It's going to be packaged, all those sorts of things. So it's, that's the intended promise. So, so there's this intended promise or this actual promise, public promise that you make from, to your customers, to the environment, you know, that we're going to be a good corp in the environmental space for an environmental management system. We're going to be a good corporate citizen. We're going to be, um, you know, we're, go we're going to be sustainable. We're going to use renewable energy. There's those sort of motherhood statements. And so it's really important to understand that, that that might get made on a website. And I see a lot of times people sort of struggle to make the connection between the motherhood statements that we, that the marketing team put out on the website of your organization and then what gets put into the policy. And it's, and it's important, like literally, you know, people struggling with quality safety environment policies for their management systems, I can honestly say, like screenshot the website and get the CEO to sign off, I'm gonna do that. And that's the best version one of a system policy that you, you can have. Get the CEO, get the organization to have an intranet site and put some bullet points around commitments to safety and just make that the policy. Like, let's not make this rocket science, but people spend all this time trying to create all these crazy documents and like, what do we write? It's like, you already wrote it. You, you had a public commitment. What is, what are the leadership team of the organization prepared to go on record and say, like on an intranet site that's not public or publicly about the promises they make to their customers? We're gonna be this type of organization. We're gonna do this, this, and this. That's your policy, you know, get them all to sign it. And then they become your objectives. And we can talk about how to actually turn them into objectives. That's the stuff. We want to say, well, how are we going to measure that? Like, and and what are we going to accept as achieved? Like, what's what's achievement of that promise going to look like for us? And that's the intended promises. Um, I think the next one is implied promise, right, Jack? So if if you punch us over to implied promise, implied promises, and and they're going to drive this, right? Because we want to understand the promises, the actual promise we're making, and the implied promise. The implied promise that I would make is that you know to my my marketplace is I'm going to maintain my Jazz Ans accreditation. We do ISO certification here in Australia. That's regulate. It's a regulated space. Uh, there's a Commonwealth government team uh, that that comes and audits us every six months. And the, the implied promise I make to my marketplace is when I issue a 9001 certificate to you, and you can show your customers. So we come and do the ISO process with you. We give you this. We issue you the certificate. The implied promise is that that certificate's legit. 
you know, we've followed all the processes to actually implement that and we've complied with all the requirements and we've done all that. That's all implied, right? Um, that we're a professional organization, we can be communicated with, we've got a complaints line, we've got trained people, you know, we're a proper organization, we pay our taxes, we pay our superannuation, we're insured, all that sort of stuff. They're all the implied promises. So when we start to frame up our management system, that's how our objectives and targets, or particularly our objectives, can make more sense because we're going to be saying, okay, well, what do we need to do by when to make sure that we can measure ourselves, that we can, at the end of the year in our management review, we can tick off, yes, we did that this year. Okay, are we going to do it again next year? Yes, we will. How could we do it better, cheaper, faster, more efficiently, for example? And that's part of this continual improvement process. How do we do more with less uh, for the organisation? So that, so as we start to win, so I just wanted to say, well, you know, what am I constantly campaigning with people? They're, they're saying, oh, I'm really struggling with this. The way I frame it is to say, well, what are the actual promises you make to your customers and what are the implied promises you make to your customers? Okay, Jack, what have we got next? Okay, I see some comments coming in. I'll get to those in a second. Um, when we move to 6.22 um, of the standard, so the 6.2, the first part, it's into 6.2 of all the standards is in two parts. You've got 6.1, which talks about objectives, and then you've got 6.22, which is planning to achieve OHS objectives in this standard. Uh, quality objectives, environmental objectives. So planning to achieve quality objectives, um, planning to achieve uh, ISO 27001, cybersecurity objectives. If you've been watching our YouTube videos for a while, you hear me constantly saying who, what, when, where, how. Um, the why is that policy. The why is the promise that you made on your website, your intranet site, in your policy. That's your why. The rest is about saying, well, when planning to achieve objectives, the organization shall determine what will be done, what resources will be required, who will be responsible, when it will be completed, how the results will be evaluated, including indicators for monitoring, how the actions to achieve objectives will be integrated into the organization. And the organization shall maintain and retain documented information of OHS objectives and plans to achieve them. So it's basically saying have a plan. Now, I don't want you guys, I don't want you guys to go and do another specific document for this. This is the ISO standard saying have a business plan. And it's really interesting across a thousand organizations, actually it's more than that now, I think it's about 1,500 organizations, 1,500 organizations that we work with here at Best Practice on a, you know, on a yearly basis. Um, we're going out and we're doing about 3,000 assessments every year. It's surprising that less than 50% of those organizations have a business plan. Um, we'll drop a link in the comments of this video to uh, Bank Portal. So we happen to bank with the ANZ Bank. I'm not recommending them. They're not amazing, they're just a bank. Um, but they have got a small business portal and it's got a bunch of free templates, like business plan template. In fact, if you wanted to do a Google search, ANZ Bank small business business plan template, that template will come up. But we'll drop, after we finish the webinar, we'll drop a link to that uh, in the comments for you so you can go see that. So here's my thing, right? Don't make more work for yourself than you need it's important, the standards talk about leadership commitment, not for this particular webinar, I'll do that in another webinar, but the ISO standard is about having these objectives for OHS, for quality, for environment, for cybersecurity in the business plan. Don't create another document. If your business is big enough, maybe it's relevant to have a separate OHS management plan for the whole company for the year. Um, one thing that I've seen to be more successful is that using Google Slides or using PowerPoint that the systems manager or the systems representative or the risk champion, so the financial risk champion, the safety risk champion, the quality or customer experience risk champion, that they do a PowerPoint slide, one PowerPoint slide or maximum two PowerPoint slides each. What's the financial business plan so the CFO, what's the CFO's business plan to improve the financial management system? Not the profitability of the business and the revenue and the sales, it's improving the system. What are the financial objectives for the business? From a customer experience perspective, what are the things that we wanna do this year to improve the customer's experience? First and foremost, last year, what complaints did you get? And I'd be saying, focus on making sure that you don't do that again. 
So what are the things we did last year to piss off our customers? What did we do to make our customers feel completely violated? Okay, let's do the who, what, when, where, how first on that so that we we know we do something that makes them upset. What can we do this year to improve that experience? What can what can we, you know, more training, more more people, more accountability, like get rid of some people, right people, right seats, right people that are motivated, people that have got the grit, the grind, the motivation and the passion to get through the dirty days to swallow their pride and to be customer centric, customer service. That might be the quality assurance business plan for 2018, 2019. The environmental plan. Okay, lots of organizations have sort of got their environmental performance under control now, but there's a whole whole bunch of opportunities where you can leave a better legacy for your family for the future. What is your organization doing that it, what is it not doing or what could it improve to make the world a better place for your for your grandchildren. Okay, if you're not gonna have kids, fine. What about your best friend's grandchildren? So your grandchildren and then those future generations. What can your company do today that will leave a really long legacy? That's your environmental management system. And then from a cybersecurity perspective, what can your organization do to prevent and maintain what's happening? So what's happening in the cybersecurity space? How do we minimize our exposure? How do we maintain what we've got? How do we stay abreast of that? That's the whole 27001 system. So sorry I'm on a bit of a rant, but what we wanted to talk about was, okay, well, how are we gonna get there? What are we gonna do? Okay, I'm conscious of time. Uh, how are we going for time? Um, we've got half an hour. I just realized that our studio clock's still on daylight saving time. Um, Jack, that's your job, fix that. Um, okay, so um, push us along. What are we up to? Okay, I just want to give you um, some help now. Okay, well, how do we start to break this down? This is this is stuff that's not in the standard. There are two types of objectives, and Jack's going to bring up a website in a second for me. So get ready for that, Jack. Uh, those two definitions that we Google: quality of objectives, and then um, our uh, sorry, quality quantitative objectives and qualitative objectives. I think qualitatives first. So we've got qualitative objectives and then quantitative objectives. So as we're talking about that, to achieve these things that we want to do, it, it might say something like, all staff shall be inducted. That's a management objective. Someone comes in, or within the first week, all, all new staff will be inducted. All staff will be trained on the company system, what's what they need to do, their role. Um, all staff shall have a three monthly uh, review after they start. So in the third month, all new staff shall have a three monthly performance review. Um, all staff shall have environmental awareness training. All staff, all staff shall have cybersecurity training. All staff shall meet a new customer. All staff shall have a customer experience. Um, all staff shall, you know, so those are the management objectives. They're qualitative. So it's, it's not like it's a, yes, you can graph it, but it's more of a, it's all or not if I'm making sense. So those are the qualitative or management objectives. Um, and then if you can flick us to that Google search and I'll read out that definition, Jack. Okay, so are you able to zoom in on that for me? Okay, so management by objectives or management objectives is, a, is personnel management technique where managers and employees work together to set, record and monitor goals for a specific period of time, organizational goals, you know, planning flow top down through the organization and they're translated then into individual goals. So we've just done a Google search. That's what we're getting from study.com, I think it looks like. Um, so examples of, so a good way to frame this up for your industry. So I'll get to your questions. I can see some questions coming through in a second, but to frame this up for your industry, you get a lot of value out of doing a quick Google search, which would be management objectives for the air conditioning industry or management objectives for the construction industry or quality management objectives for the construction industry. And doing that Google search, like if you ask me what would be some good examples, I'll do a Google search. Like I've literally got my phone handy. I will do that quickly for you in a second and we'll see what we can find or we'll get Jack to do it. But in terms of how would I, you know, what would be some valuable ones, don't just document them because somebody else did. Say, what do I want to achieve? What can we do to improve our customer's experience? What can we do to improve our environmental performance? Okay, what are we gonna set ourselves? So now I just wanna give you a small piece on mindset. Can you bring me back to the performance, um, the performance definition or the qualitative performance? 
um, screen. Am I there now? Okay, cool. Thank you. So from a qualitative performance perspective, we can then look at a dashboard. So um, one thing, we did we set up our graphs, Jack? We've got that open, ready to go. So I just want to show you our dashboard. So if you've seen the back of some of the videos here at, Dash, at Best Practice, some of the vlog videos that we put up, the fun stuff we do, you will see that there's these graphs. They get printed, they get put up on the wall in our head office and also in our, some of our other offices around the country. This is our qualitative performance, sorry, quantitative, even I get confused, performance metrics. They go through our marketing team, our sales team, our financial team. They scroll all the way through the whole business. So we're tracking things like leads. If you go all the way down to Greg's ones, we've got like some quality, quality stuff, keep going, sales, finance. Yeah, go up a little bit for me. So that one there, for example. So, you know, independent reviews. This is some of our customer service type stuff that we're looking at. That's our dashboard. Now, if you just take me back to the full screen, you can, thanks for, thanks for that, Jack. When we're looking at um, the quantitative performance and we're talking about that, this is a mindset piece for you. Where do you see yourself and where do you see your organization and where do you see your area of responsibility? Where is it in 24 months from now? 12 months from now, 24 months from now. Now it's important to be doing things you know, with a, with a three year view if that makes sense, and always having a three year view so that you can be working towards that. But where do you see yourself in 12 months time? Where do you see yourself in 18 months time? And even I did that, I do it almost every day when I'm thinking like, where do I see myself? Do I still see myself in the same place? Am I still doing, you know, I see myself in this place and then each day I ask myself, do I still see myself in that place? If in that place, not this place, if that makes sense. So from a mindset perspective, as you start to think about where you want to go, where you want to improve. And last year, you may have had 12 customer complaints, 12 significant customer complaints, one a month for the last 12 months. Are you intending on upsetting 12 customers this year? Is that your intention? Is that what you're planning to do or failing to plan to address? So that would be the first thing I'd say from a quality management perspective, let's do some stuff that pisses off half the amount of customers next year. Like, okay, the reality is we're gonna upset them. Okay, but let's try and halve the amount of violated customers next year. Let's try and improve our environmental performance maybe by 20%, by 30%, you know, those metrics. So you can start to think about that and frames it, frames it up for you. So the real question is, where do we see ourselves? Now, I know some of you might be jumping to your career thought right now, that is fantastic, because that is something that really drives me and motivates me when you're thinking about who you are, your role and the organization. Do you see yourself with your organization in 12 months time or 18 months time? And if you do see yourself with your organization, where do you see yourself in the organization? What have you achieved? And the way that I work is I have a notebook. Some of you might see me carry it around in some of the videos. I write down the things that I've achieved. Like I write down my to done list, if you like. So. The, in 12 months, I have my list of things that I've done written down 12 months from now. It's all written down and then every day I look at my list and I go, right, what do I need to do today so that I can tick that off in 12 months time? That's how I work. That's how I am who I am and that's, that's what brings us to where we are today. So in 12 months time, I will have run 12 monthly webinars for you guys. That's what I intend to do it. They're set, they're scheduled, they're planned. We're producing the content as we go. They're not all developed. They'll be developed you know, just in time. So they're fresh and live and feel really good. But that's what I intend to do. And I intend to have audiences of three, four, 500 people per webinar. So in, a web, in the webinar that's exactly a year from now, I intend to have an audience of somewhere between 500 and 1,000 people in that audience because I'm passionate about helping people and I want to help more and more people each time. That's my plan. How do I need to get there? I need to improve the invitations. I need to get you guys you know, liking what we're doing. I need to be delivering webinars that help you. So that's my management objective and I've got to rally my team around that for that because that's what we're all passionate about. If there's people in my team that are not passionate about that, they're not interested in that journey to helping those thousand people in what month are we in? April 2019, then I've got to manage my team and my resources. So that's the who, what, when, where, how, and why. So starting to think about that for your organization, where do you see your organization 
in a year's time? Where do you see your team? Where do you see your part of the business? Where do you see your management system in a year's time? Now, some of that may already be documented in the business plan. So you may have been given a plan, a revenue target, a profitability target, a customer service target. Okay, well, how are you going to get there? What are the things you're going to implement? And what are you going to do each day to achieve that? Okay, so, um, quick sip of water. What's next, Jack? I think we're going to have a look at some websites. Okay, so um, hopefully you guys are watching. We've had a couple of comments on our YouTube channel over the last few days. We stalked you guys on LinkedIn. We found you and we found the companies that you work for. So we're just going to have a quick look at this and hopefully I'm helping people. Uh, we're having a look at, uh, is this one Emerson Technologies? Yes, it is. Perfect. Okay, now I don't want to look at our technology. Take me to the home tab. So um, this is a really interesting website. So um, Pixel Perfect Machining. That's a promise. So when we talked about objectives and targets, what are you guys going to do? Who's going to do it? When are you going to do it? And how are you going to do it to deliver when a customer has your product, your widget there that we can see on the screen? It looks like a something that goes inside a turbo. Um, so with Pixel, Pixel Perfect Machining, I assume for me as a naive customer, that means like it's an amazing surface that's been machined onto that. And it's, you know, C, maybe it's CNC machined, um, three-dimensional machining. But there's a promise there on that website. And this is what I'm talking about with the quality management system. The quality management system, ISO 9001, the whole intention of that whole standard is to deliver that promise. Pixar, pixel perfect machining. Then down below on the website there, Jack, let's show them. We're talking about pristine services, micron precision, additive finishing, thin wall feature, sorry, uh, additive finishing, thin wall features, affordable micro arrays, ref refractory alloys and super alloys, and then non-contact infinite tool life. So infinite tool life. Those are the promises I'm talking about. Now, I haven't had anything to do with that organization except that somebody who works there watches our YouTube videos. That's it. We don't commercially engage with those guys. We, we wish we will. Hopefully one day we'll get to certify them to ISO 9001. Um, but for Emerson Technologies, those are the promises they're currently making. Could they improve their website? Maybe they can. Can they improve those promises? Maybe they can. But we have to really think about a customer looks at that website and reads that, the whole intent of the quality management system is to deliver that. So when the customer has the product in their hands or the part has been added to their equipment, you can tick those for that customer. Did we do that? Yes, we did. Tick, tick, tick. So ISO 9001's objectives are all about who, what, when, where, and how inside the organization, what do they need to do to deliver those promises? So hopefully that helps you guys connect what you're promising in marketing sales with your management system. Okay, let's have a look at the next website. Sorry for grilling you guys, Emerson Technologies, but um, um, you had a good website. Thank you very much. Okay, so who's these guys? Uh, that's Emerson again. What was the other one? Voxel. Sorry, Voxel, I apologize. Let the cat out of the bag. That was Voxel. So Voxel, thank you very much uh, for your website. Okay, Emerson Technologies. I apologize for that. Okay, so Emerson Technologies. Um, where, um, what is it? We focused our new, uh, we focused our new core business platforms to deliver the automation solutions and commercial and residential solutions you can count on. So what they're promising is that you can count on this. Now that's a pretty big statement. Are you saying that nothing ever breaks? Are you saying that there's no downtime? Because I bet you've got a commercial agreement where you've you committed to 80% uptime. But in your motherhood statement there, your quality management system has to be built. Your, your who, what, when, where, how has to be built around counting on it, like absolutely counting on it. So you are a key foundation, a key pillar to the success of your customer and how your system adds value to your customer. What are some of the other statements? So you've got to be really thinking about who are the service people? What are the, what's the technology? You know, is it bulletproof? Is it tried and tested before we release it to our customers? Okay, what other promises have we got there, Jack? 
Um, from new oil and gas projects to existing operations, we can help you achieve top quartile performance. How will you prove that? So what have you got set up? What's in your system that proves that you can do that? And they've got best practices in action. You can go and look at those case studies. So this is all about the, the, the how of this process, the who, what, when, where, how, how are they going to achieve that? So that's what your quality management system, your, your business plan, and then your management system is designed to deliver that promise. So when you're reading these ISO standards, read them with that in mind. Okay, what am, what's this thing meant to do for our company? This thing is meant to deliver that promise. So that when the customer has been served, they've been served, they've got your service, they've, they've received your service, they've received your product, they've paid the bill, and they're sitting there saying, thank you very much, they can tick that you've done all of those things for them. That's the whole intention. Very high level, I appreciate that. Um, but, but when we start to break, it's up to you guys to then break that down and say, okay, well, that's your specialty. How am I gonna do this for my company? How am I gonna do that for the customer? From an oh and perspective, there might be an oh and website that says zero injuries. Okay, what are we gonna do to have zero injuries? We'll start by not doing anything. You know, eliminate the risk completely. And then you can work out how we're gonna work safely so we don't have injuries. And we're gonna monitor people so they work safely. And if, if we see someone not working safely, but they're about to be hurt, we wanna stop them. That's all the who, what, when, where, how of achieving a zero injuries objective in the organization. Okay, what have we got? Jack, we've got, I'm gonna go through those questions in a second. Um, what slide, what slide's the next slide? That's it, we're done? Okay, perfect. Um, okay, let's have a look at the questions. All right, so, um, let me have a quick look here. Uh, hey Sophie, um, hey Omar, how are you? I see that you logged into the training academy. Um, I hope you're enjoying the courses. Okay, so uh, Elmar, our company measures success via VFPs, valuable final products. So that's the valuable final product. So your, your business development team is doing tendering and when they win a tender, they pass that valuable final product over to the uh, the construction team. Your valuable final products are your objectives. On your organizing board, Elma, you've got uh, the VFP of each of your seven divisions, and then you've got sub VFP. So under each of those columns, yes, they are your objectives. Okay, um, are there little goals for each division to achieve? We measure these goals within monthly stats, yes. So Elma, if you look at your, um, your dashboard, and I have the same type of dashboard as you, and maybe we can have another conversation after the webinar finishes, we can have a phone call. Um, if you were to put a dot on your graphs, up on your OIC, your dashboards, then, um, then those are your objectives, those are your targets, your little goals if you like. So this was our number on our OIC, where do we want it to be? We want it to go up to here. Okay, that's your, that's your target if you like. Um, as an example, projects delivered on time, on budget, that is a VFP we measure. Uh, that by how much money was spent on the month and how many defects we had, uh, if we had any setbacks. How can we solidify this more? Uh, number of defects per dollar value um, is, is what, so uh, how much money was spent in that month and how many defects we had, if we had any setbacks, how can we solidify this more? Um, defects is a good one, Elmer. I would be thinking about maybe categorizing defects into waterproofing defects finishing defects, construction defects, structural defects, concrete defects, steel defects. Uh, and, then, and then at the beginning of the project, having, maybe having a conversation with the customer or the architect on the project. Uh, Elmer's company is a construction company, Protec, they're called. Um, having a conversation at the front with the architect and saying, what are the sorts of defects you'll be looking for at the end of the project? What are the things you're worried about? and then measuring that as a lead indicator so that the customer is happy that you are paying attention to the things they're concerned about along the way. So what? So it might be the things you want to manage and measure, but, but at the very beginning of the project, talking to the project team, the architect, the sub-consultants, the client, and saying, what are, the things, what are the things that are really critical for you at the end of the project? They might say, we need the keys to this new building on a specific date. You go, okay, so time is critical for you. The time can be a defect, no, not on time is a defect. As much as a dent in the gyp rock or the paint color's wrong or the windows aren't washed or scratched or damaged. Those, you know, in construction we're thinking about damage 
his defects, but what about time and what about value? You know, the, the customer might, might say to you, this is our dollars. It's all we've got. We've been given a grant from the government to build this building. It's all we've got. And you're saying, okay, great. We can't go over this dollar value. So when we're asking for variations, the variations have got to come from somewhere else in the budget, not on top of the budget. So we can talk more about that. I've got lots of ideas for you. Hopefully that helps. Um, okay, uh, perfect. That looks like, Sophie, any questions? Um, anyone else I can help? Uh, what have we got there? Um, how easy are our metrics to collect? Are they a lot of work? Yes, they are. Um, the graphs that we showed you, that takes somebody half of Monday every week to put those graphs together. Could we be faster and more efficient? Yes. But I'll tell you this, it's worth investing in. Yes, it's hard work, it's not something that's easy, but it's worth investing in so we know how we're going, so we can, we can improve our performance. So we, we collect those numbers, we tweak them, and we do that analysis on ourselves, how are we tracking to go forward? And so, you know, it might be like an, an, an Olympic athlete that tests their times every day or uh, somebody who wants to lose weight gets on the scales every day. How much weight am I losing per day? And so, you know, it, it's worth, you know, stopping and taking a little bit of time to actually check your performance and, and check and see how you're going. So, yes, unfortunately, yes, our metrics, it's work, um, but I don't see it as hard work. I see it as a real good investment. I invest half a day's labor in one person per week to collect those numbers and produce that report so we can see how we're going. It's no different to the amount of work that your finance department does on a daily basis to be able to give you accurate financial reports. Like it's, it's we, we're investing time and money in people in our finance part of our business to check how much money we're making, the profit we're making. Well, why wouldn't you invest in the lead indicators that indicate early how much money you're gonna make? Like, if you do the investment and do the analysis around oh s performance, if you know that doing hazard identification and risk assessment and control is going to prevent an incident because you know incidents cost money, they stop the business, they upset people, they cost money, you could be fined, all that sort of stuff, then that would be a worthy thing to invest in and look at and track the performance because if you can get an early indicator that you're about to have an incident and that incident's going to save, save someone like a regulator, like work cover coming in and saying, you have to stop work and close your company while we investigate this, means you can't trade for two weeks, then of course you would want to know that. It's like my car when I'm driving down the road has got this little thing and it says ding, 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 speed camera coming up, slow down. I mean, it should be driving slowly anyway. My car doesn't tell me when I'm driving fast, but it tells me when there's a speed camera coming up well in advance so I can go, oh, hang on a minute, I need to slow down. So. It took work for the company that made my vehicle to put that in, and it's worth it. It's, it's, it's worth it. These are all lead indicators that when you, profitability you know, is, is the end goal, I guess, so that you've got financial health, so your con company continue to operate. It's not so that you can make lots of money, it's so that you can keep looking after people and them having jobs and all that sort of stuff. So unfortunately, yes, it does take work, but it's a good investment. It's a, I think it's a worthy investment. Okay, what else we got, Jack? Any more questions? Nope, okay, fantastic. Um, if you guys have got questions, uh, Elma, you're, you're welcome, no problems. Um, uh, just any questions, anytime, Elma, no, no worries at all. Okay, um, for those of you that aren't connected with me on LinkedIn, uh, do a search, so you just search my first name and my last name to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you need, if it won't let you connect because you need an email address, just use kobe at simat.com.au. That's my LinkedIn email address that gets you uh, an invite to my a LinkedIn account so you can connect with me. Um, and that's a great place to constantly like get directly to me to ask questions. So if you ever wanna try and get through to me, um, for me to help you, then, uh, then message me on LinkedIn. Okay, I uh, believe we've got a special offer for anyone who hasn't already purchased these courses, ISO 9001 Essentials and the ISO 9001 gap analysis checklist videos. There's a series of videos that go with our ISO 9001 checklist. So you've got my amazing face on the essentials course, and then you've got Maz's amazing face on um, the, gap, the gap analysis checklist. Is that right, or is it me? No, no it's Mazza. Okay, so um, I know Sophie knows Mazza, uh, Michael. So um, the two of us presenting those two courses, they're absolutely fantastic. And there's a discount code there, is there? Or a landing page? If you click, it's a landing page, so in your email that you received, 
uh, that was attached to your sign up for the webinar, there's a link. Uh, that's a great place to go and, um, and grab that discounted course uh, essentials. So if you're watching this webinar after it's happened, thanks for joining us. Uh, that landing page will still be available. It's not exclusive uh, just for this specific webinar. So go ahead and take advantage of that opportunity. Okay, um, if you guys haven't got any more questions, um, I'm gonna wind it up there. I'm gonna say thanks for having us. Um, make sure you're checking out what's going on on Facebook. Um, importantly, our certified magazine is due out any minute. I think it's almost ready to go to the printers. A week away, maybe? Yeah, maybe a week. Okay, I'm getting nods and shaking. Okay, I think, I think we've signed off version five. Uh, so it's five versions to get certified. Issue three out to you guys. So uh, that's really exciting. Got some great articles. It's got in the back page, it's got the, uh, the webinars that are coming up for the next couple of months. I think we're scheduling them all the way up to about October this year, so you'll know what topic is coming up. If there's a specific video, if there's a specific article, a specific question that you've got, reach out to us on any of those social media channels. Commenting on a post on Instagram is a good way to get a comment through to us, or hitting live chat on our website. So you get the best practice website, a little live chat window pops up, you type a question, and there's people here every day answering those questions. And Lauren, a marketing manager, she's in the UK, she answers them at night. So you pretty much get an answer out of best practice 24 hours nowadays. So thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks for having me once again. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your effort. I really appreciate your support. Um, you can watch us everywhere at Best Practice TV and encourage your friends, tag your friends. And if there was some good stuff in this webinar, let me know. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what I could improve. I wanna keep improving these things. Um, I'm just, I'm, a lot of it's coming out of my head in terms of what we're, what we're doing. So if there's specific things that you see that are frustrating you or I could improve, uh, then let me know. I'm, I definitely know my brother-in-law Grant has told me to stop saying arm so much. I'm working on that and hopefully more great content for you guys as we go forward. So thanks very much. Have a great 2018 everybody. If you need help with those plans, you want some suggestions, do a Google search. The best management objectives in construction, the best management objectives in manufacturing. See what you can come up with. Then if you want some guidance from me, reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll see you soon. Next time on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.